Welcome again this afternoon to the group exhibit for hydrogen fuel cells and batteries here at the Hanover Fair 2016. My name is Michael Sinclair and I will be uh, the moderator for this next discussion. Uh, I welcome anybody who's standing to please sit down, have a seat. There is table service for refreshments, so sit down and make yourself comfortable and enjoy the discussion. Questions, if anyone has any questions for our guest anytime, just please raise your hand, wave to me, I will bring the microphone to you. Uh, so, you, so everyone can hear the question being asked. Um, the title of the uh, talk today will, is called Thermal Management of Fuel Cell, Battery and uh, High Power Electronics uh, in, uh, in Battery Electric Vehicles, Hybrid Electric uh, Vehicles and Fuel Cell Vehicles. Joining me on stage is the Technical Business Development Manager at Dana Holding Corporation. Please join me uh, in welcoming uh, Nick Coleman to the stage. Thank you very much. Hi, thanks, Michael. This is um, the first time on stage I've got to welcome a fellow Canadian on stage, so, you know, thank you for joining us. Um, as By way of introduction, I'm hoping you can start by uh, introducing us to the Dana Holden Corporation, uh, what uh, businesses you are have been in, what businesses you're moving into, and why you're joining us here at the fair. Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot, Michael. So. Um, Again, my name is Nick Kalman. Uh, I work for uh, Dana Corporation and I'm part of the Power Technologies Group. Uh, Dana is a fairly large company. Um, uh, we play in various different markets of commercial vehicle, uh, highway, light passenger, and the business unit I belong to, which is Power Technologies Group. Um, our mass market really is for passenger car and uh, for commercial vehicles. And I work for part of the division called the Advanced Technologies Group and the business development team there. Um, the Advanced Technology Group, Michael, we are a mix of different disciplines that really look for new products and new markets. Uh, and that's what brings us here today to Hanover as part of the group exhibit. And within our Advanced Technology Group, uh, we have business development people such as myself, uh, product engineering and design people, as well as manufacturing. So we, we bring those three people or those three groups together uh, really to develop products uh, for e-mobility and uh, sustainable energy markets. Yeah, very good. So you're uh, primarily an automotive supplier and this is a potentially new uh, large market for you and that's, that's very exciting. What um, specific uh, knowledge uh, or capabilities uh, do you feel that you'd be bringing to the table at a fuel cells and battery show? Yeah, well, so we're really leveraging um, our, our core competencies, which come from uh, heat transfer, and uh, the, the company I work for was originally long manufacturing, and we started in 1904. Uh, we, built, we built radiators for the Model T Fords, and uh, right through the decades to now. So we really bring over 100 years of experience and optimizing heat transfer for, you know, for these new markets. Um, so part of the Advanced Technologies Group is, is, is supporting Dana's vision for sustainable growth, uh, and environmental products and, and, and mobility, um, and, and that's really what the, the products we're, we're trying to develop and, and bring here. Um, can proudly say we have been part of this group exhibit for over 10 years now. Um, and many of my colleagues here as well from Germany, as well as uh, fellow Canadians, uh, Americans and Japanese people. So we all work on really a global team uh, to, to develop the type of products we need for, you know, for this market. Very good. So the, the title of the talk is Thermal Management of Fuel Cell Battery and High Power Electronics in Electric Vehicles. Um, could you tell us about, uh, maybe give some examples of the type of products that you're developing for those kind of three separate product groups? Sure. Let me start with, uh, I'll start with, uh, well, the three main product areas, of course, are, are battery cooling, which is a couple types power electronics cooling, which we'll talk about, and then fuel cell vehicles. So for battery cooling, over at our, our, our display here, we have uh, two main types of battery cooling. Uh, one is intercellular cooling, which is where we have liquid cooling directly in between pouch cells for hybrid and electric cars. This is now a commercial product seen on several different OE hybrid and electric vehicles. 
the second type of cooling strategy was to use a cold plate uh, underneath, and this is really applied more to prismatic and cylindrical cells. So these are the hard can type cells that are situated on there. Uh, our products for this market are primarily uh, made of uh, brazed aluminum, uh, optimized with correct heat transfer product for each application. For power electronics, uh, the new trend with semiconductor materials uh, is, is double-sided chip cooling. Uh, so you're now seeing higher power fluxing through the inverters and the power electronics, uh, higher heat loads, and of course you need to protect those devices uh, from failing. So um, we've developed a number of different solutions, again, with uh, brazed aluminum um, in, into this market. And, and the key one I want to point out there is traditionally this market was served with many copper products. Uh, so uh, when a lot of the integrators came to us, they looked for solutions that would be lighter and lower cost. So we used our, our knowledge of, of aluminum joining and, and stamping and heat transfer to provide an aluminum solution to that. And we're proudly launching products right now towards that market as well. For fuel cell vehicles, uh, we have a number of different uh, heat exchangers that we've developed, all for the balance of plant system, whether it's on the cathode or anode uh, supply system. Um, these are in development, of course. Uh, we also do have some commercialized products into the material handling industry already, again, to manage your stack coolant loop um, for that market. And these are all also aluminum products. Very good. So it's quite a wide uh, portfolio of products that you're developing. Um, if, if, I'm a, if I'm a prospective customer and I come to you with a particular design challenge or, or application, I guess, how, how does the typical interaction work um, what, you know, with your company? Uh, well, really, you know, we have to look at um, each request on a, a business case you know, type of a, a system. And uh, from that point, we, we screen it into our business development. Uh, we involve the engineers and we, we take a look at it. And, and what we really try and provide is a custom tailored solution for each application. So using our knowledge between product engineering and manufacturing, work with the customer. And the earlier we can work with the customer on, on what they need, the more we can drive out cost and, and, and really try and um, provide an optimized solution that's going to fit. So that's really how um, the customers react with Dana. It starts with our business development team and then we kind of expose them and use the necessary engineering tools we have in our, our product development centers and apply our CFD and FEA and present them with a solution and if it looks like it's going to move ahead, uh, we begin prototyping and, and move on to commercialization, um, such as some of the products we have here in our booth today are commercial products. Um, ten years ago, we had a nice collection of prototypes and engineering reports and modeling results and uh, here we are 10 years later and we are, can show some products that are uh, finding their way onto commercial programs. You're obviously building on a, uh, a lot of history of, of technical know-how. Um, what can you say are the more unique challenges that you're faced with in electromobility? Um, you know, again, uh, like all industries, everyone wants lower cost, lighter weight, uh, more compact and, and long durability. Um, some of the key challenges that you know, we, we see on uh, with e-mobility for battery cooling and fuel cells, uh, there's, there's a real uh, need to limit contaminants and, and have clean processes. Uh, the coolants that circulate through these systems can often be subject to high voltage and uh, the way that they're brazed or joined uh, has to be done in a very clean process. Um, at Dana, we have a fluxless brazing process that we apply to join our materials. This leaves a very clean surface and avoids certain conductivity concerns with, uh, with different types of applications. So. Yeah. So yeah, we have, uh, you know, we're obviously here talking about e-mobility, but what about other market segments, other related market segments, such as, re you know, distributed residential systems, off-grid systems, you know, uh, are, are those markets that you're also considering? Yeah, again, you know, we look at all, all, all the requests that come in and, and do our market analysis and things are looked on a, a, as a, a business case analysis every time. Uh, we do have some projects and, and different programs in other areas. Uh, one, for instance, is the material handling, in, material handling industry for, for forklifts, and um, we do have products that we've launched into there. Uh, at this point now, we're also looking at sustainable energy, uh, even areas such as wind power um, have needs for you know, thermal management that we're beginning to look at as well. So we're not just limited to automotive, of course, or transportation. Uh, we're looking at many, many different aspects here. You know, people industry-wide are, are um, you know, very much predicting uh, a mix of technologies in, in the future of, of uh, vehicles. Uh, you know, from the three that we've mentioned here, fuel cell vehicles, battery vehicles, and hybrid vehicles. 
how, as someone who you know is is working in these areas, you know, how do you see this unfolding in the marketplace? Will we see uh, kind of a mix and even mix of these technologies, or do you see the industry converging eventually on a singular technology? Okay, that's a great question, and I think there's probably a lot of different answers out there for that. So I'll give you my perspective at least. Uh, I, I think in terms of e-mobility, uh, when we look at all the various options and we talk about hybrid cars, pure electric cars and fuel cell cars, at the end of the day, these are all electrified powertrain. Um, how the energy is stored or produced on board, there's all these different options. So I, I don't think there's a clear winner yet. There's no racehorse that we've jumped on at least. But what we're doing is preparing ourselves for any one of those uh, to really become a, a mass dominator. Um, the way I see it, at least, and, and the way part of our, our advanced technologies group see, is that there's going to be a, a balancing or an optimization of the amount of storage on board a vehicle and the amount of range you need. So you either make the, bit, the battery larger or you're going to have a range extender on there. Um, that opens up the possibilities. So the so-called fuel cell car, as everyone's been imagining, envisioning, and we're seeing, uh, may morph more into being a, a fuel cell range extender uh, on a hybrid vehicle. Just uh, like to remind the audience that at any point, if you have any questions, just uh, let me know. I'm looking around the audience now. Okay, we'll continue. The, um, you know, now you've been at the show for a few days. Uh, we've seen, obviously, um, you know, many, many years of technology development to get the industry to where it is today. Uh, and we haven't seen the market adoption that we would have liked to by now. But, but I think uh, we're getting the sense that people are pretty optimistic. You know, how do you feel after being at the show for these few days? You know, about uh, about the fuel cell market, about you know the hydrogen economy that we've all been dreaming of. Yeah. Well, like I mentioned a, a few minutes ago. Um, I, I think having come here 10 years ago and, and, and showed everyone our prototypes and, and now being able to show some commercial products on there, I've, I've kind of witnessed the evolution. So I feel like we are at the beginning of the commercial stage right now. Uh, and, and, and talking with other people at exhibits in their booths, I think a lot of technologies are on there now. So uh, many, most of the parts that we have and that we're displaying here, uh, we have production tooling for, we have processes in place that have been developed, we're meeting customer specifications, uh, we're meeting their cost targets. It, it's really now waiting for that, that market uptake to happen. So I think you know, we're privileged to be here and, and see that initial market traction, at least in e-mobility. Um, there's already, you know, hundreds of thousands of, of electric cars running around. Uh, for instance, in China, there's a, a, a huge growth sector there right now, and, and we're participating in that right now. So to answer your question in a nutshell, I think we are now talking about the first stages of commercialization. We're experiencing it. All right. And so, um, have you had any significant, uh, significant takeaways? Have you learned something new at this show? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't had a chance to wander too much out of my booth, but um, I think there's some you know, exciting things that uh, I've been able to see, especially in, in, in test equipment and how far uh, measurement analysis and, and, and load cycles have come. Um, there's much more better representation of, of true applications and feedback to develop products now than there were a long time ago. So I'm, I'm impressed with how well-rounded the, you know, the whole industry has become in terms of understanding what the needs are and being able to drive commercialization for all the products. I guess my last question might be, as a, as a fellow Canadian from the Canadian perspective, you know, how are we doing as a country right now in this space? Well, I think you've just got to walk around here and, and have a look that uh, there's a good Canadian presence. Uh, you know, um, it, part of the, the, the Dana Technologies, where I come from near Toronto, Ontario. Uh, we have our product development center, there's a number of us here. Uh, and then you can walk around and, and, and take a look and see Hydrogenics and, uh, and various other people who are here as well. And even more importantly, I, I think at 5 o'clock today, these uh, Canadians are hosting a reception here uh, as part of the, the Canadian Council. So, of course, everyone's invited as well to come and join us and uh, just see what the Canadians are up to. Thanks for the question. <laughs> So thank you so much uh, for joining us here. Um, you, for more information, of course, you can always... Oh, sorry, we do have an audience question. Oh, very good. Uh, do, do you think that fossil fuels become obsolete? And if yes, then when? Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Do, do, do you think that fossil fuels become obsolete? Fossil fuels? And if yes, then when? Well, not in, not in my lifetime, um, but I, I think that it, it will be a long way off. But, you know, 
uh, unless we're going to grow some dinosaurs and plant some rainforests, bury them and wait, there's going to be a time when there's not going to be any more fossil fuels to count on. And uh, the sooner we do that, the better. I think the limiting factors is really going to be more driven by environmental uh, and pollution and, and, and health uh, uh, of society and, and globally is what drives the companies that are here, I think, to achieve higher energy and, and pollution-free stuff. But uh, for now, I think for the, for the future, there's a significant part of the market share that will remain fossil fuel powered and the gains in efficiencies and environmental uh, that we're seeing conventional powertrain um, under development right now are incredible. Uh, for instance, the, the, the whole aspect of 48 volt hybridization and doing mild hybridizing can save uh, a, a huge amount of, of, of pollution and energy just in, in, in putting a light hybrid on every conventional powertrain out there. And then at the same time, as we see the, the market mix for electric and, and more hybridization for fleets come in, that's going to pick up the other part of it. So, All right. Well, uh, this has been an enlightening conversation. Uh, I really do appreciate you being here with us. Um, Obviously, there's a whole a lot of information that we can learn about thermal management of fuel cells, batteries, and high-power electronics from, uh, from uh, Nick here at the Dana Holding Corporation booth. More information, of course, can be found there at B63, so that's just over that way. Um, if you could all join me in, in thanking Nick for coming up here and, and being with us. Thank you very much. It was an honor. So stick around. There is another. Uh, there is another discussion coming up right away here at 4:20. The title of the discussion is Greenlight Hydrogen Infrastructure, and that's with Greg uh, Walsh uh, from Greenlight Innovation. So stick around, uh, and we'll be right back. <laughs>